So this November, we got to hang out at the Evangelical Theological Society. We snagged a bunch of really cool interviews with a lot of different speakers. This is one of those interviews. We hope that you guys enjoy. Hey guys, welcome to Remnant Radio. My name is Michael Roundtree. This is Dr. Carmen Imes, uh, a friend of Remnant Radio. You guys have probably gotten a little bit used to her. So, uh, privileged to have you with us. We're at the Evangelical Theological Society, so you see a whole bunch of going on in the background here. Uh, but Dr. Imes uh, has presented a paper recently, uh, or is about to present a paper, Tomorrow, yes. uh, on the death of the firstborn, violence in the Old Testament, kind of how that all works out. But before we talk about it, Dr. Adams, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, I'm Associate Professor of Old Testament at Biola University, and this is my 14th ETS meeting. Okay. So I 14. started out as a grad student and kind of was like starstruck to see a walking bibliography all around me of all these scholars and getting to see them in person. Yeah. And now, uh, now people are really geeking out when they get to meet me, which is weird. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> Well, we go from geeking out to freaking out. Okay. A lot of times yes. people look at plagues in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Of course, we see them in Revelation too, but uh, plagues in the Old Testament, violence in the Old Testament, and we'll spoke, focus specifically on death of the firstborn. Yeah. How are we in light of the new covenant, in light of the cross, to understand these things? I'll just allow you to dive yeah. in at any point there. Well, I, I'm actually just reading kind of very cl a close reading of the plague narratives and showing how the literary design of Exodus sets us up to, to understand the death of the firstborn as an appropriate punishment that fits the crime. Mm -hmm. so, there, so we think of it as like, oh, these innocent children are dying. How could God do such a thing? So what I'm going to do in my paper is lay out how God is actually tremendously gracious and patient and how he incrementally shows them who's boss in a way that doesn't cost anybody anything. Like if you think of the early plagues, like the water into blood or the frogs, what do frogs do? They don't bite. They don't hurt you. They don't hurt you. They don't get you sick. They're just like, ew, if they're all in your bed, right? right. So God starts off with plagues that actually don't cause any physical harm to humans. And he gradually ramps it up, giving them chance after chance after chance to repent. And so that's part of what I think is happening, is we're supposed to see the graciousness of God. He could have just smashed them at the beginning, and uh -huh. he doesn't. He gives yeah. them lots of chances, and it's only after they've been stubborn that okay. many times in a row that he says, all right, yeah. this is what you're asking for. Okay. So, Okay, in the stubbornness conversation, how do we? Yeah. How does the hardness of heart work into all this? Yeah, Pharaoh that, having his heart hardened yeah. or hardening his own heart? I am working on a commentary on Exodus for Baker Academic, so I'm thinking a lot about this. And one thing that I've noticed that is fascinating is that there's actually three words in Hebrew that get translated as hard heart in ex Exodus, but they're not the same. And so what God does to Pharaoh's heart is different than what Pharaoh does to his own heart. Uh -huh. So the first five plagues are uh, Pharaoh, let's see, let me get this right. First five plagues are Pharaoh hardening his own heart, um, but it's making it heavy, which I think in an Egyptian context probably means um, that he's actually choosing to act unjustly. Uh. Um, it, the heavy heart is uh, like the one that weighs on a scale against the feather in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. And so it's a wow. way of saying Pharaoh's choosing injustice wow. and he keeps choosing it. And in the last five plagues, it tells us God hardens his heart or makes it firm or, or resolute. So God's not making him cruel. Uh -huh. He's not making him unjust. He's just giving him endurance to right. sort of stick out this um, showdown with God and to do what he has already determined to right. do. So there's not, like he's not giving up his free will. Right. Um, God is just strengthening him to do what he's freely chosen to do. Right. So, and then in the justice of God conversation, yeah. it's God's, it, it's actually maybe part of the judgment mm -hmm. that Pharaoh yep. hardened his heart, so he's getting his just yep. sentence. Yep, okay, so I wanna, you picked this, so. <laughs> yeah, so I wanna come back to the death of the firstborn. Sure. Uh, I'm recalling, is it Exodus 12, maybe? Okay. Where God says, um, God says, because you wouldn't let my firstborn yes. son go it's and worship. It's actually Exodus 4, okay. on the way back to Egypt. So I think it's verses 22 and 23, where God tells Moses, Pharaoh's not gonna let you go, and here's what I want you to tell him. Um, you wouldn't let my firstborn come and worship me in the wilderness, so therefore I'm gonna take your firstborn. And okay. so there's this built-in punishment fits the crime that God anticipates before any of this even unfolds. Yeah. And so, of course, that doesn't happen until the end, and there's always the possibility that Pharaoh could repent, say, okay, I surrender, you win, you're more powerful, these people actually belong to you, but he doesn't. 
right. it's because of that repeated hard-heartedness that okay. God brings that judgment. Okay. Uh, last question. Let's put it in this new covenant context okay. and uh, the Jesus being the firstborn in yeah. a way. Okay. Yeah. Does how does that play into this whole conversation? Yeah. So Jesus is called in the in the New Testament. He's called the Son of God. Mm -hmm. He's he's the firstborn among many brothers. That's right. I think um, Jesus is embodying what Israel was. So God says clearly about Israel in Exodus, Israel's my firstborn son. And so then to call Jesus the firstborn is, I, I think there's a, a typological thing going mm -hmm. on where, where Jesus represents Israel. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then he experiences, because he's dedicated to God, he experiences everything Israel's supposed to experience, right. like it, including the blessings of the covenant. So there's been lots of debates about how could God have a son? especially in conversation with Muslims, yeah. like how God cannot beget or be begotten. Right. And I think it, the point of the language is covenant, not mm. ontology, not right. like genetic or right. genealogical. It, this, is a, this is covenant language. To be father, son is to be in covenant with each other in right. terms of the Hebrew Bible. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us yeah, uh, for this for quick me. little interview. Guys, hope you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button and uh, check out the, the books, the channel of Dr. Imes. Where, where can they reach on or find you on YouTube? Are you still? Yeah, I'm still doing Torah Tuesday every Torah Tuesday, Tuesday, releasing videos. Yeah. Um, and I'm on uh, Twitter and Facebook as well. Okay. And I have a blog, so just awesome. Google. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah. for joining us. Hope you enjoyed that short interview. Uh, and if you're interested in learning more about church history or theology or the gifts of the Spirit, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because we come out with content every single week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We interview pastors and teachers from different churches and denominations. Uh, we, we talk about their books that they've written. We talk about the, the the theological disagreements that are going on right now, either in culture or in the academic space. And, and if you really want to really think deeply about Christian issues and hear from a broad, uh, a, a broad base of sources, this is the channel for you. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because we'll keep coming out with content every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday throughout the week.